In this video I'm just going to do a quick introduction of the halogens. So the halogens are group 7 and I've drawn up three of the members of the halogens group here. So we've got chlorine CO2, bromine Br2 and iodine I2. And I haven't just chosen those colours at random. Chlorine's pale green, bromine is orange and iodine is purple. And you can see underneath the state symbols there, gas for chlorine, liquid for bromine and iodine is a solid. I'll come back to that in a moment. They form diatomic molecules, so I'm just using X to represent any halogen. So we have seven outer electrons in each shell, and so rather than exist as an atom, they prefer to pair up and form a diatomic molecule. So we have this single covalent bond here, which is the shared pair of electrons. Very simple covalent structure. And so they have weak van der Waals forces between the molecules. So a property of that would be very low boiling points. And so when you're boiling these molecules, all you're trying to do is break the van der Waals forces. So if I just use my hands to represent, so each hand is a diatomic molecule. We separate the molecules from each other. That's all you're doing when you boil something. We're not trying to pull the atoms apart. That's a very strong covalent bond. So if we go back to those state symbols now, so why is chlorine a gas at room temperature and pressure, but bromine's a liquid, but iodine's a solid? It's all to do with the strength of the van der Waals forces between the molecules. So you can see I've added some extra information now. Chlorine has a proton number of 17. So therefore, in a chlorine molecule, there are 17 electrons times 2, so 34 electrons. In a Br2 molecule, we've got 35 times 2, and so we've got 70 electrons in that. And in I2 molecules, we have 106 electrons. And so you can see the number of electrons is increasing, and that makes the van der Waals forces stronger between the molecules, and obviously raises their boiling points. The next thing to say is where they are in the periodic table, they're all in the P block. So that's this part of the periodic table here. You see group seven is down there. So why are they called P block elements? And that's because their highest energy electron is in a P subshell. Their electronic configuration, you can see I've written up there, all ends in P5. So you can see I've just added in the corner there the shorthand electronic configuration for fluorine. So it's helium configuration, 2s2, 2p5. Chlorine would be 3p5, bromine 4p5, iodine 5p5 and so on. We'll just finish with a, a little bit about their chemistry in this opening part of the video. They are all oxidizing agents and basically what that means is they are electron acceptors. So you can see if I go back to the dot and cross diagram there, they will quite happily accept an electron. So each, basically each atom in the molecule is happy to accept an electron and become the halide ion X minus. So if you had say chlorine Cl2, so remember each atom would gain an electron. So that's two electrons in total would be gained and you'd end up with two individual chloride ions. So their ability to attract the electron from something else will influence its oxidizing power. So the better it is at accepting the electron, then the more powerful and oxidizing agent it is. So we'll look at some uses of chlorine now. The first one we'll look at is to do with its reaction with water. So you can see the equation there. Cl2 plus H2O gives HCl and HClO. It's a nice ring to it, isn't it? Cl2 plus H2O gives HCl and HClO. So we're forming two acids, hydrochloric acid, and I've written the name of the other one up, so you mightn't be familiar with that. That's called chloric one acid. So why do they do this reaction? I'm going to jump to this information here. So chlorine's added to water to kill bacteria. 
So a good example to illustrate this is the bacteria that causes cholera. The cholera is an infection of the small intestine and very, very nasty um, infection and can kill. So chlorine added to water will prevent the bacteria from um, taking hold. And so you would say that's a very, very good thing. And um, chlorination of water is common, commonplace in a lot of countries. However, chlorine does react with organic compounds in the water and we can form these halogenated organic molecules and they are known to be carcinogenic. And so you've got both arguments there. So chlorination of water is good because it kills the bacteria, but it's bad because it can, it can form compounds that are known carcinogens, cancer-causing chemicals. Uh, and there's a, an example in history of where the, a government, a Peruvian government back in 1991, actually stopped chlorinating its drinking water and the number of cases of cholera increased dramatically in that country and in neighbouring countries as well. And I think they very quickly sort of started putting the chlorine back into the water because the, the, the risk from the cholera um, was far greater than the, the risks to do with the um, carcinogens that are formed. So we'll look at the information in purple now. We've got the reaction of chlorine and water, Cl2 plus H2O gives HCl and HClO, um, is classed as a disproportionation reaction. So what does that mean? Um, if we look at the oxidation number of chlorine in Cl2, it's zero, so it's an element. In HCl, it's minus one. And in HClO, that chloric one acid, it's plus one. So you can see that the chlorine has been reduced. So the oxidation number has gone down but it's also been oxidized. The oxidation number has gone up as well. And that's called disproportionation. So we've got two chlorine atoms in here. One of them is reduced. The other one is oxidized. So disproportionation, the same atom, the same chemical is oxidized and reduced. The same element is oxidized and reduced. So we'll look at this reaction now. It's the reaction of chlorine with cold aqueous sodium hydroxide. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the same ring to it as uh, the previous one. So Cl2 plus 2NaOH is NaCl, it's NaClO and H2O. Not as good as Cl2 plus H2O gives HCl and HClO. You'll never forget that, will you? So if we look at the products there, we've got sodium chloride. The chlorine has an oxidation number of minus one in that. We've got sodium chlorate one. So the chlorine in that is plus one. Remember oxygen minus two, sodium plus one. So that chlorine in there must be plus one to keep the compound neutral. And we've got water. And you'll see I've written underneath sodium chlorate one. That is bleach. So without this reaction, we wouldn't have bleach. So again, you can see an importance of this reaction in sort of the disinfection area. It's a disproportionation reaction. I'm sure you can tell from the, my explanation with the oxidation numbers there. So the same atom is oxidized and reduced. So chlorine is oxidized and reduced in this reaction. Disproportionation. So we'll finish with a, an extension of this reaction. So instead of cold aqueous sodium hydroxide, in this equation here, I've got hot concentrated sodium hydroxide. And you can see we get, we get a slightly different reaction. So we still get the NaCl, we still get the H2O, but instead of sodium chlorate 1, we get sodium chlorate 5. So we'll just quickly explain the oxidation number. Each oxygen minus 2, so it's minus 6. The sodium plus 1, so obviously we need plus 5 from the chlorine to keep the compound neutral. So how would this equation balance? Have a go and then I'll put the answers on. So we're actually going to use the oxidation numbers to help us balance this. Um, makes it a bit easier. 
So if we think about the oxidation number on this side is zero, but on this side we've got a minus one and a plus five, so they don't cancel out. So to get these to cancel, we're gonna need a five in front of the NaCl. So that gives us five minus ones, cancels out that plus five. So it gets easier now, so you can see we've got five sodiums plus that one. So we've got six sodiums, so we're gonna need six NaOHs. And you can also see that we've got five chlorines plus that one, so that's six chlorines, so Cl2. We need three of those. And then we've just got to finish off with the waters, the hydrogens in the water. So we've got six H's in those six NaOH's. The only substance with hydrogen in is the water. So we need a three in front of that. And that gives us those six H's that we need. And you can see the oxygen's balance. We've got O3 plus those three is six, six O's there. So oxidation numbers can be quite handy to help balance awkward equations like that. Just double check why it's disproportionation. And so chlorine has been oxidized. Where's the oxidation process? It's there. Oxidation number's increased and reduced. So the same atom is oxidized and reduced.